Give a gift of beading by sharing your designs today on Beads, Bubbles, and Jewels. Beads, Bubbles, and Jewels has been brought to you in part by Beading Daily, your jewelry making resource for how-to projects, books, magazines, DVDs, events, and online learning. Beadingdaily.com Beadalon, a manufacturer of flexible bead stringing wires, memory wire, artistic wire, stringing materials, innovative findings, and tools to help you fashion your own jewelry. Beadalon.com Dreamtime Creations, an online supplier of crystals, findings, and jewelry making supplies since 1989. DreamtimeCreations.com Halcraft, Jewelry Component Manufacturer Halcraft.com On our final episode this season, our jewelry workshop turns to beaded gifts. Share your hobby and love of your craft with everyone. Hi, I'm Katie Hacker, your host. Today's first guest is Jackie Trudy, clay metal expert. She's making a beautiful fingerprint pendant. It's a perfect gift, but be sure to save one for yourself. Then, my final workshop is tips for packaging your handmade jewelry gifts. Finally, meet Jean Baruch from Beads of Courage. Learn the story of this charitable group and how to share your love of beading with a purpose. I'll be right back with Jackie. I'm here with art clay silver expert Jackie Trudy. Welcome, Jackie. Thank you very much. So it's glad to, to have you back. Yeah. yeah. And today we're talking about sharing your love of beading. And I know this is the last show of our series, but I wanted to give everybody an overview of how to get started with this type of clay because if they've never tried it, let's get them. Get them before they're Let's gone to the going. series. Yeah, okay, silver clay. Silver clay is 99.9 .9 fine silver after you fire it, but it's so malleable that when you're working with it, um, it takes a texture really well, so you can stamp it, roll it, whatever you want to do. And there really aren't too many complicated tools at all. All you need is a work surface, okay. and you need something to roll it on, and we use non-stick work surfaces. You can use a bunch of things, but I like that. You could just cut up a small piece to put on your work tray. You could, right, right. And we use a roller, can be made of anything, we use acrylic, even people use PVC pipe. Um, straws, things like that to put holes in them. Since you're clay, you don't have to worry about drilling things. Oh, yeah. And so you would make the hole for a pendant? For You'd example? make the hole for the pendant right in the clay. Um, we Some people use playing cards, but I like to use strips because I know exactly how thick they are because you don't want to roll the clay too thinly. So we use those on either side to keep our piece nice and even. And then tweezers. Uh, after you fire it, you would use something like a stainless steel or brass brush to bring up the silver shine. Right. And then any kind of polishing tools. I use a agate burnisher but you can use a tumbler all kinds of things like that and then you want some water handy in case you have to uh, reconstitute or rehydrate the clay okay and a little release and release is to keep actually to keep your hands moister so that they don't dry the clay out so much because oh. the clay is air dried so you're not protecting you you're protecting the clay and what kind of release do you use like a natural wax you, you can use olive oil you can use um, I can't say like different balms that they have oh, okay. out. Yeah. And it's just to put a little bit on your hands and a little bit on your tools so that the clay doesn't stick. Okay, is there anything that you would want to avoid? As far you as want to avoid petroleum hands? products, okay. like um, some of the things that you would use like on your chest or something. Okay. Yeah, you want yeah. to avoid those because okay. those are um, actually very detrimental to the silver. Okay. And aluminum. Good to know. Yeah. All right. And what about that brick? Oh, the brick. This is, oh, this is the brick. This is the firing brick. This brick actually is compressed vermiculite. And we use this brick all the time because it stays very cool. And when you fire your piece, the heat is right here and it's all reflected. It's not absorbed at all. Okay. So um, this takes about 2,300 degrees, which is perfect because you're firing at about 1,600. 
Okay. So it's a really good work surface to fire on. Yeah, and we'll see you do that in a minute. But yeah. Tell us about the With torch. The butane torch. Yeah. This is a butane torch. There are many, many different kinds of torches. It really doesn't matter what kind of torch you're using. <clears throat> Excuse me. It, it's all about the color of the metal. So when you're firing, and hopefully we'll see it, the metal will glow kind of a salmon color, and that's what you want. So I've seen people use butane, use propane, use map gas. Oh. So it's really just about distance. Okay. And so uh, I use butane because it's a, it's a not a no-brainer. You turn it on and it's all ready. You don't have to adjust it. So that's it. great for beginners too. It's great for beginners and most of these have little safety catches on them anyway so for kids you can't all turn right. it on inadvertently. Oh that's good. And yeah. are you um, particularly careful to use a jewelry making torch or is it okay to use a kitchen torch? Um, it, kitchen torch is fine. Okay. Yeah I think as a matter of fact this one is from is from a particular company but you can go to um, culinary stores and just buy a, a culinary torch and it works just fine. All right. Good, so how do we get started? Oh, okay. let's talk about what we're gonna make today. Yeah, so the yeah. fingerprint pendant, we have a couple of samples over here. And I love this idea because it's so personal. It is very personal. There's so many different things you can do with it. The thing is to keep the clay really moist because if the clay is a little dry, you're not gonna get a real good impression. But this is wonderful for identification for all kinds of things for children because oh. the metal lasts forever. Okay, so what do we do first? Okay, first we get the clay. And this is 10 grams. You don't have to use quite 10 grams. You can use seven. I think both of those pendants over there are seven grams. So the first thing you want to do, like I said, is get a little release on your hands and a little on your roller, and then you're set to go. You should have everything all ready because when you're working with uh, silver clay, again, it's air sensitive. It's air dry. So you don't want to be looking for your tools so after make sure you've you're opened all set it. Up. Right. And this is not a lot of tools here, so you could even no. stash this away in between projects, bring oh, it out when you're ready to work. Put it in a little box and have it ready. It really, it's very, very easy. Nothing real special. I think the torch is the most uh, expensive thing that you're going to need. So I have the clay here. It's all ready to go. I could even take a piece off if I want. And I'm just going to roll it into a ball. As easy as that. Put it down. If you want, you can roll it just to get it a little bit flat just like that. And if you're going to hang it, then of course you want to put a hole at the top. If you forget, you can drill it with a little pin vise after it's dry. Oh, it's okay. not a problem. But it's much, much easier just to go boink, turn it, and there's your hole. So it's much easier. And when you do your actual thumbprint, what I've done um, on those is I had it up a little bit, and it really should be down. So you want to make sure your thumb is clean. Okay. So all of the grease and dirt and everything you want off, and then you really just put your thumb in. You don't want to move it too much because it'll ghost it. And then lift up and your thumbprint is in there. That's so cool. And all you do is dry this, and you can dry it with a, a cup warmer, you can use a hair dryer, a food dehydrator, whatever, or if you don't have anything, you could just let it sit out for 24 hours. Okay, so Works you want to make well. sure it's completely dry before you fire it. Yes, it has to be absolutely bone dry, otherwise the moisture in it will turn to steam and it'll actually rupture. Oh. So through the magic of television, I have one here that's already dry. And you can see here how um, you, can, you can't really see the ridges yet because it's still clay. But I have the hole at the top, and you can use a little sandpaper if you want around the edges, or you can leave it rough. It's really up to you. Right. And if you do have little extra powder and stuff, you can save that in a little container and just add water and reuse it so it's all recyclable. That's amazing. Yeah, it is. It's very cool. And, and it's hard to realize that that's silver. It's, I'm still amazed. So this is our brick. And the next thing we're going to do is fire it. All and right. it really isn't anything more complicated than turning on the torch. You don't really have to flip it. You don't have to do anything. So it's two minutes after the glow. OK, so what we're going to do first is just heat it up. And if it jumps up a little bit, you know you had moisture in it. But this is all nice and dry, and it's going to smoke a little, and the fire, that's all normal. That's the non-toxic binder burning out. And it's just like burning paper. It can't hurt you. But if you have asthma, you're sensitive, of course, then wear a mask. It never hurts to be over, you know, over safe. Right. Make sure you're working in a well-ventilated sure area. Very well-ventilated, the whole thing. And yet, again, it's non-toxic. Nothing's going to hurt you. So once you have that gone, then what you're going to do is wait just a minute, maybe 30 seconds, and I'm going to hold this really close. And what I am hope is going to happen is that you're going to be able to see this glow. 
I do see it starting there to get a little go. bit orangey. And you see how it's pulling up a little bit? That's the 8 to 10 percent shrinkage, and that's going to settle right down again. And one of the other variations, too, I had, uh, I had done on one of the finished pieces is I have some um, stamps here with some initials. So you can put the child or whomever, you can put their stamp in the wet clay so that you can identify them. And I have some CZs here so you can even put a birthstone in it. So if it's a February, January baby, you can put it, you just press it right in the clay and the CZ will fire right in. Oh, it does. Okay. Oh, it so fires you, right in. Do you, you know, I had a question about that with the CZs. Do you have to make sure that the clay is covering the edge a little bit or will it just hold it naturally? That's a really good question. You have to make sure the girdle, which is the widest part of the stone, is in the clay. Okay, so, so it's that when covered it shrinks, a little bit. It just oh, grabs okay. onto it. Yeah, that so makes the sense. shrinkage actually acts like, um, like solder. I love the idea of using the birthstone to go with the kid's name. That's oh, clever. I, it's so cool, especially the uh, the name, too, to put the name in. And we're probably real close a, to the two minutes, I'd say. Yeah. I'd say let's pretend it's two minutes. Yep, I think that's right. And you can see right. the glow. This is now um, done, and I have tweezers here because obviously this is very hot. I have some water here, and if you don't have stones, you can quench this. If you have gemstones, though, you can't because the... the sudden water will um, fracture the stone, yeah. So if you... So you can hear that, went. see? And when that happens, it's immediately cool. Great. Isn't that neat? Yeah, and then how do you bring up the shine? Is that where your brush comes in, or would you that's run your fingerprint? The, that's where the brush comes in, because now the silver particles are standing up, so you really can't see the fact that it's silver. But as soon as you start brushing it... And it's okay to brush right over the print. Brush right over the print. The print's not going anywhere. And what you do to bring up the print after you're all done and it's dry because it's a little wet now, is you brush it real well and then you can take, this is an agate burnisher and it's used to polish the, uh, the silver. You can polish around it and you see how shiny it makes it. And then when you go over the, the um, print, it kind of brings it up. But in order to make it really stand out, you wash it first with baking soda that I have there, and then this is liver of sulfur, and that's a patina agent. And when you dip this and then brush it off with a polishing cloth, like the one you have next to you, it really brings up the print so you can see the, the um, contrast much, much, much better. And we didn't talk about this block when we first got started, but is it wooden or does it? No, this is a rubber block and we just use it. I use it so just matter of factly. Surface. Yeah, it's just a surface to keep it up near your head. Okay. So, and we're done, that's it. This is great and what a perfect gift. Thank you so much, yeah, Jackie. My pleasure. Thank We've you. enjoyed having you this season. Great. We'll be right back. Today we've been talking about sharing your love of beading with family and friends. And of course, one of the perfect ways to do that is by giving beaded gifts. So when you make earrings, for example, think about the presentation. If you take a look at these earrings that I put on some little paper tags, and that's just a fun way that you can present them to your family and friends. Or you can also display them on a frame like this. And all I did was replace the glass with cork so that you can easily pin things into it. And I think this is a really fun way to display your jewelry even. You might as well show off your work, right? This piece right here is a frame that I replaced the glass with a piece of window screening. And that's a very simple technique. All you do is cut the screen to fit and then hot glue it into the back of the frame. And you can use it to present your earring gifts and then they have a little display for it too. And I even embellished the corner with a filigree and a little metal spacer and glued a crystal on top just to give it a little bit of extra touch. You know, when you take the time to make handmade gifts, you might as well go that extra step and make it really super pretty for the receiver. Now this is an example of matching your packaging to the piece that's inside. So rather than decorating the outside of the gift, I chose the turquoise ribbon to bring out the beautiful color of the crystals there on those earrings that I made. And this gift right here shows a slider on the front and all I did for this one was coil some wire and then I taped the ends to the back of the package and that's a fun way to present just one of a component that's just enhancing your packaging a little bit. This one I put some adhesive crystals onto the ribbon and you could also use them to embellish the flower. Now if I had really planned ahead I would have put a pin back onto the flower so that the person could remove the flower and wear it as a brooch. 
These cards also are some examples of how you can incorporate beading. This isn't necessarily part of your gift, but it does just take your piece to the next level by adding a little beading to the front of your stacked paper design. Same with this picture frame. I created the dragonfly using some check glass beads and seed beads and twisting them together. And that's a fun way to just add embellishment to home decor projects, but it also would work great if I replaced that picture with screening or cork, and I could use that to present some beaded earrings that match, like I did with this card. The card is handmade by a friend of mine, and I just used a beading awl to poke tiny holes in the front and hang the earrings that coordinate with the front of the card. And that is a really super simple technique and a fun way to present it. You just want to make sure if you're putting that in the mail that you put it in a padded envelope. Now this is another home decor idea and I love making these for Christmas ornaments. Especially with pictures inside, you know, it's a really fun memento. And these are very simple to do. And I'll show you how to create this hanger. You'll want to start out with 18 gauge or 20 gauge wire. And you can choose any color and you can even um, just guesstimate on the length. So this one is about, you know, 14 inches long, we'll say 12 to 14. You'll use your wire cutter. Then all you do is create the coil by wrapping it around a pencil or you can use a wooden dowel. And you can make it a very neat and tidy coil or you can make it a little bit funky. And you'll be able to adjust it a little bit once you take it off the pencil. Now the heavier gauges of wire are going to retain more of the shape. So this one is a little bit thinner. I could even hammer it if I wanted it to have more of a flat appearance. And to finish the ends, what you do is pass it through the front of your picture frame or your ornament or your little piece of wood and use your round nose pliers to create a little spiral. Now I always tell people when you're making a spiral that you wanna hold your wire still and just turn your wrist. Then grasp the loop inside your chain nose pliers. I'll get this one out of the way here. And then turn your wrist again. You're holding the wire still, and you're turning the loop. And it's in that flat surface of the pliers, so you're creating a nice, even spiral. Now, there are special tools that will help you make the spirals, too. But this is kind of the quick and easy version, last minute gift version, that you can make right before you're heading out the door. So that's just a quick spiral with the coil. And if you take a look at the ornament that I made, you can see that spiral here on the end. So it's threading through the front of the frame, spiraled at the front. And then if you take a look at the brown one, I added some beads. Now I cut a longer length of wire there, and I added the beads before I coiled it on the pencil so that I could space them out um, fairly evenly along the length of the pencil as I was coiling. And you see the same technique of spiraling it there at the front. And I did give it a little extra wrap there so that it would be nice and sturdy because that's a little bit of a heavier piece. And of course, that is another way that you can incorporate beads and wire into your creations. And that would make a fun gift, or you could use that as a gift tag. So imagine instead of stamping the word dream, you could stamp someone's name and put that right on the top of the package and they have a nice little plaque for their inspiration spot in their studio. So these are some beaded gift ideas. That's our jewelry making workshop for today and I'll be right back with Beads of Courage. And so today's show has been all about sharing your love of beading, and we have a great story for you now with Jean Baruch, the founder of Beads of Courage. Welcome, Jean. Thank you so much for having oh, me, Katie. We're thrilled that you could come and tell us your story of how you created this wonderful program. Oh, I love to talk about our work through Beads of Courage. Uh, we're an organization that provides arts and medicine programs for children coping with cancer and other serious illness. And our flagship program is actually called the Beads of Courage program. And we have a sample strand, strand here. And through this program, Katie, children receive different colored beads, each which symbolize the different treatments and procedures they go through. So every child who has a particular treatment receives the same bead. Exactly, and we uh, supply over 150 hospitals in six countries. It's amazing. With the program beads. And how did you come up with this idea? You know, it evolved from my experience as a camp nurse, as well as I was working on my doc doctorate in, in nursing, I really wanted to develop a coping intervention. And I was looking for ways to give children a tangible way to record, tell, and own their story of courage. You know, working as an oncology nurse, uh, you do have a compelling need to give your patients something, not as a reward, but really to honor the courage that you witness day in and day out. 
Yeah. Oh, and it's you were probably giving them stickers and things they couldn't keep, and this way they can keep a record. Exactly. Most nurses call upon, upon the sticker station, and stickers are disposable. And what you find with Beads of Courage is the beads are long-lasting, uh, tangible symbols of what they've been through. Uh, the program does follow a bead guide, so we supply all the nurses who implement the program at the bedside with our what we call our clinical protocol for Beads of Courage. We take our work very seriously as right. a form of art given as a dose of medicine. Oh, I love that. And so the bead guide identifies the different treatments and procedures that children receive beads for. For example, on the sample strand here, Katie, I have uh, a yellow bead for overnight stay, a rainbow bead uh, for physical therapy, occupational therapy, a blue bead for every clinic visit, times they've had to miss school for treatment, a uh, white bead for chemotherapy, and the list goes on. Um, one of the groups we work with, Katie, that we're really proud of is the International Society of Glass Bead Makers. And so they're making some of the special beads for you. Exactly, so I really believe it's the art in our arts and medicine program. Annually, we receive over 60,000 handmade lamp work wow. beads. Wow, wow, that's great. And then volunteers at our headquarters in Tucson, Arizona, individually package them. So you can see on this sample strand here, uh, this is a lamp work bead. And these are given for what's known as an act of courage. So the nurse can clinically intuit, wow, this, this is a big deal. This yeah. is a big thing that you went through. We need to pick an act Something of courage. Something really bead. special. Exactly. And so when the kids get started, the first thing that you do is give them a piece of leather cord, right? Yeah, they start with their name spelled. So this is a sample strand, so we, we strung up Charlotte here. Mm -hmm. And they start with their name, and then they just start collecting their beads from there based on uh, the treatments and procedures they encounter. Most children in our program have well over 500 beads in their collection. Wow, and look at this picture. Now kids love to wear these too, and it gives them the way to talk to each other and to their families about what they've been through. Exactly. I, you know, I tell people that the best analogy is a well-decorated military official. They have their ribbons of color and honor for serving our country, and the members of Beads of Courage, it's no different. Every bead that they uh, receive, they've gone through something painful or uncomfortable during their treatment journey. You can see a great photo here. We uh, call all our members rock stars, I love as, it. as they should be. This is a great picture of Nolan, who I've personally met, and he's just an incredible little guy, he's actually started his 18th strand wow. of beads um, during his treatment journey. And so children who are going through chemo, you also do this program with cardiac patients. And, cardiac. And the uh, NICU as well. NICU, exactly. Uh, we Our mission is not just children with cancer, but all serious illness. Um, currently, we carry about uh, 800 children that we mail them their beads. So they're oh, receiving wow. treatment where the program isn't provided at the bedside, but we do uh, support them with the program through the mail. And so you're doing also this program where kids who are part of the family can get involved by submitting art to, yeah. your, to your design contest. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, this is a great program and we do it annually. It's called our Bead Design Challenge. And our internal team uh, was thinking, you know, how can we further tap into the creativity of our members, stay on mission, which is arts and medicine. So we launched essentially a drawing contest and we challenged 10 different hospitals to 10 different themes. So, for example, if courage were a bead, what would it look like? If hope were a bead, or as you see here, if love were a bead, what would it look like? Yeah, so this is the drawing that was submitted. This is the drawing. And, yes. and then you had 100 of these made by lampwork artists, right? Yes, yeah, so we, if your design was the top design, we paired you with a lampwork artist to make your bead. Uh, so it was, it was an incredible opportunity to connect the lampwork artists one-on-one -on -one with a child for them to actually appreciate right. the art of lampwork making. And then we hope uh, with jewelry designers, what can you make with the beads that were made? Yeah, and really use this as both a tool of talking about your program, I think. And mm -hmm. I made this bracelet it's using the love bead. And this one, um, you know, is a version that was cast in metal from your glass. So it went, I loved when you showed me this process. I just think this is really forward thinking. You have the drawing, you have the glass, yeah. and then you cast them in metal so that lots of people can spread the word too. And we'll have the instructions for this bracelet that I made on our website. Um, but I just combined it with some different beads and reinforcing your message there. It's fabulous. I love the faceted stone and then you use a magnetic clasp so yeah, you can it easily it easy to wear, right? get it on and off quite easily. Yeah, and I also wanted to take a look at this book so you can see a few more of the drawings that people submitted. 
Yeah, we honored every child that participated in the program. So even if their design wasn't selected as a top design, we put them in the book. So that's been a fun process as well. And we sent all the children copies of the book to share with their family. Oh, and, that's great. And shared with them, you know, make sure that you put this on your college resume, you're a published artist. Definitely. <laughs> and this is another sample of one of the beads that was made from a drawing. And you can see the drawing here too. Yes, this one was fabulous. Uh, we did ask all the children who submitted their designs to also, in the coloring sheet, in their own words, describe what they thought courage was. So if you look at this bead here, this is the top design for courage. If courage were a bead, what would it look like? It's a fish. And it's best described in her own words. She's like, well, courage would be a fish because it reminds you to keep swimming. Keep on swimming, isn't that the truth? Thank you so much, Jean, for being here with us to share this. It's a wonderful program. Thanks for having You're us. You're welcome, and congratulations on 10 years. Thank you. And we'll have lots more information on our website, so if you're interested in getting involved or finding out ways that you can bring it to your local hospital, please check that out. And thank you so much for joining us again this season as we created our own jewelry making workshop. I hope you've followed along to learn lots of new skills and techniques. Join us again next time as we begin a new season with more great jewelry and beading projects. See you soon. Instructions for today's projects, plus other ideas, techniques, and tutorials are available on the web at beadsbobblesandjewels.com. This is show 1813. If you enjoyed today's show and want to see more projects and great guests, Download individual episodes for $2.99 each or order a complete DVD set of the entire Beads, Bobbles and Jewels Series 1800 for $29.95 plus shipping and handling at BeadsBobblesAndJewels.com. Don't miss a single episode. Beads, Bobbles and Jewels has been brought to you in part by Beading Daily, your jewelry making resource for how-to projects, books, magazines, DVDs, events and online learning. BeadingDaily.com Beadalon, a manufacturer of flexible bead stringing wires, memory wire, artistic wire, stringing materials, innovative findings, and tools to help you fashion your own jewelry. Beadalon.com Dreamtime Creations, an online supplier of crystals, findings, and jewelry making supplies since 1989. Dreamtimecreations.com Halcraft, jewelry component manufacturer. Halcraft.com